All right, so we have 11 things Dead Island 2 doesn't tell you. Let's go to the video. See what this is about, man. I haven't done a video in two days. That's my butt. My, 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 my bad for slipping, you know? Sorry about that. Survivors. Let's go. Okay, Dead Island 2 guy, 11 tips and tricks to keep in mind. Years and years in the making. It's been 10 years. Dead Island 2 is finally here. Damn Buster Studios and Deep Silver's action RPG is out now, bringing the series' first person zombie action back into the limelight. And given how long the wait has been, it goes without saying that lots of players are going to be diving in over the coming months and weeks. Yeah. As you make your way through a zombie-ridden LA, there is plenty to keep track of. So to help you get to grips with things a bit smoother, here we've compiled a few basic tips and tricks that you should keep in mind as you play the game. Okay. Right, let's Picking see. your Slayer. The very first choice you'll be making in Dead Island 2 is which character you want to play as. Yeah. Because like its predecessors, it has multiple playable characters. Jacob looks cool, I can't lie though. Slayers. There are six of them this time around, each coming with unique attributes. And once you've made I your like choice, that. you won't be able to swap any of the main characters on that save. Our advice is to take your time with this decision and choose based on how you intend to play. Okay. If you want to play sense. with a tanky character who can take plenty of damage, Carla is a great choice. Okay. While Ryan is great for those who prefer to focus on DPS. Mm, okay. Blocking. Dead Island you can two block in this game? First person game, but like its predecessors, it won't see you using too many guns, with its combat being almost entirely melee focused. And given how often you'll be getting up close to your enemies, oh, there's no. plenty of blocking and Okay, I see what they're saying. I see what they're saying. In fact, as you get deeper into the game and start facing more threatening enemies or larger groups of zombies, defensive actions become that much more important. It's best to get the hang of blocking and dodging early on in the game, <laughs> especially since doing it with the right timing. Bro, why did you try to haymaker you, bro? Attack. Environmental kills. Do you mean like explosions and stuff like that? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, explosions and using okay fire, yeah, understandable. Oh my god. The many weapons you'll find throughout your time in Hell A will, of course, be your primary means of slaughter. But there's I can't that little sword thunder thing is hard. environments that you can use in creative ways as well. For instance, if you see a sparking wire, you can use water cans to make a puddle around it and then lure zombies towards you so they get caught in your electrifying trap. Okay. Using your kick and jump kick can also come in particularly handy. If you're Kill a bunch at the same time. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Elements. Okay. Unique elemental properties. Yo, that play sword is so hard. The thunder sword. Combat, oh my god. And making use of them can be quite useful. Not to mention a lot of fun. Electricity, for instance, can be quite effective against <laughs> large groups of zombies, especially because if you hit them with an electric weapon enough times, they'll become stunned and take continuous damage. It can be made even mm, more effective, however, if I didn't know the that. enemy you're targeting is wet which means finding ways to get them soaked, whether that's with a can of water. Uh, I thought like that would just take too much time, though. With the help of a fire hydrant, oh, my God. Who was that, Brock Lesnar? Better results. Dismemberment. Dead Island 2 prides itself on gore, and while it does look incredible, it's not that just man's the haymaker, you bro. purposes. Dismembering enemies can actually have tactical advantages on combat. You can, yeah, you can like, show up the legs and stuff like that. Oh, runner. You're looking to cut hey! off what type of enemy you're fighting. If, for instance, you see a runner coming at you, slicing off its legs can be a great way to neutralize the threat. Yeah, Since, I mean, that makes as sense. As your name suggests, runners are all about movement and mobility. And, of course, there's Hey, bro, those runners, bro, are moving like straight Warzone uh, players, bro. Off its neck. Weapon types. Get over what here! damage are you dealing to your enemies and how you're breaking or slicing their body parts apart is, as you may have expected, based oh on what God. kind of weapons that you're using. There is an impressive variety of weapons on offer in Dead Island 2, and they fall in different groups of attributes. For instance, while bulldozer weapons are better equipped to take on larger groups of zombies at once, yeah, they're slow. naming weapons are best suited to the task of dismembering enemies, while frenzy weapons are ideal for faster flurries of attacks. Yeah. Keep a varied selection of weapons on you at all times because one single weapon isn't going to be the right choice for every combat encounter. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I want to use different weapons too, so that makes sense. Scrapping weapons. 
Dead Island 2 will have you swapping in and out of weapons frequently, thanks in large part to its durability mechanics. I like this because it keeps the game interesting. Up a lot of weapons throughout Hell A. But though not all of them are good enough to be used in combat, <laughs> the boys. if the weapon has a low damage output, it's worth picking up. Oh my god, they, they like these with it. For scrap, which in turn is used for upgrades and customization. I can't laugh. I'd probably say my favorite one is probably pick up as many weapons as you can and keep the, 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 the electric sword. I like oh, that one. And speaking of upgrades. And upgrades and mods. The one that you punch, the uh, the brass knuckles one. I like that one. I like those two. Though the game encourages like the you most. to not stick with just a limited selection of them, you can and should keep upgrading and customizing them to power them up in unique ways chief among them being infusing them with different elemental properties. By its very nature, Dead Island 2 encourages you to use a wide variety of weapons, but having an arsenal full of upgrade tools with specialized damage gets increasingly more useful as you get deeper into the game. Honestly, it just keeps everything Character like builds. new and fun. I feel like if you use, if you just go around using one Uh-oh. While each slayer has starting statistics and attributes that make them unique, if you go around using one character, uh, one weapon, it'll be boring. To personalize and customize For your me. character through its skill deck system. I'm a teaser though, so like, you know, it's, it's, yeah, you, you know, and uh, you the know. Game. Their build variety on offer is quite impressive and lets you cater your character's progression to your playstyle quite a bit. So keeping an eye on the skill deck is something that you should definitely be doing. Hmm. Especially as the game adds more and more layers to it as you progress further in the story. Okay. Unclaimed property. Unclaimed property. Dead what Island does this mean? Does allow you to repair your broken weapons, which oh, okay, means yeah, you yeah. can have your favorites stick around in your inventory for longer periods. But what happens if you do lose one of your favorites? Maybe just by accidentally throwing or discarding it. Thankfully, that weapon's not gone forever. You can simply head to the unclaimed property section. That's cheese. No, 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 no. That's cheese. I feel like if you accidentally you lose lost. it, or whatever, you deserve it. You deserve to be for it to be lost, in my opinion. Exploring environments. Hey. Dead Island Two isn't an open world game, but quite a few of its environments I thought it was an open world game at first. And provide plenty of room for exploration. Even when you're literally moving through levels and get from point A to point B, you can often do so in a couple of different ways. So if, for instance, the door of a house that you need to get into is hey. locked, well, you can try to find the code to open the door. You can also just try and find a way around and break in. Okay. Sliding glass door I mean, in the back, maybe. I'm simple. Exploring I'm going through the door. Of course, also but that's just useful me. useful for finding new weapons, resources, logs, and collectibles, skill cards, side quests, and more. Hey. Oh, that's it. Know that oh, well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a little quick little video. It's just of 11 things you didn't know about dead island too hope you guys are enjoying the game comment down below what you guys think about the video and uh, i'll see you later for the next one i'm out